A man is lying in a scrapyard. He is buried in garbage and scrap waste. Surrounded by crows hovering over his head, he seems dead. His eyes are wide open but not responding to any movement. Suddenly, a crow hops over and sits on the man's body, ready to dig its beak in. As the crow is about to peck his face, the man wakes up from the dead and grabs the crow with bare hands. He stands tall under the orange sky, wondering how he ended up here. While asking questions to himself, he lights up a cigarette. One puffs in, and he realizes the smoke is leaking out of his body from all directions. He lifts his shirt, discovering wounds all over the body. While freaking out, he drops the cigarette that falls onto his bare foot. His skin starts burning, but he doesn't feel any pain. While figuring out what is going on with his skin, he finds a broken mirror piece in the garbage. Just by looking at his reflection, his feet start crumbling. His face is all pale and black. He is looking like a dead person walking, like a zombie. While trying to remember what happened to him, the man tries to speak but instead makes weird growling sounds. After realizing he's not a human anymore, he decides he'd rather die than live a dead living life like this. So, he strolls in the woods and finds the nearest cliff to jump. When the man jumps from the cliff, he breaks his neck, spine, and pretty much every bone in the body. But still, he feels no pain while getting up again. He can't die even if he wants to. The zombie man feels cursed to live such a life. He spends a few hungry nights in a cave, staring at his broken watch and fighting the gloomy thoughts. Then, one morning, while wandering around, he sees a rabbit. With it, his hunger starts kicking in, and his body involuntarily starts walking towards it. While chasing it, he faints on the ground. But, when he opens his eyes, he sees himself feeding on the rabbit's flesh. The man feels disgusted seeing himself eating a live animal. He wants to change and go back to normal. But this can only happen if he remembers how he became a zombie. To know his identity and how he turned into a zombie, he decides to go to the nearest town, Gangrim, and investigate it himself. What could it be? An apocalypse or a zombie virus? At night, when there is less risk of getting caught, the man sneaks into the town and stumbles across a nice hoodie. But that hoodie belongs to a young woman named Gong Sun Ji, who is a reporter working on exposing a crime. She happened to put her phone in the hoodie pocket earlier while a dog was chasing her. She comes to look for her hoodie at night and sees the zombie man wearing it. She tries to talk to the man and get her phone back, but he can only make growling noises if he tries to speak. While Sun Ji gets busy taking out her phone from the hoodie, the man's zombie instincts kick in as he tries to bite her head. But just in time, he controls himself. He then avoids conversation and does not make eye contact with the woman, because he doesn't want anyone to know that there's a zombie in the town. Meanwhile, Sun Ji thinks that he's drunk and homeless, so she gives him some money before leaving. The man vows to himself that he'll never eat human flesh but find something else to feed his hunger. He goes to the jungle, where he sees a bird's nest. To become less zombie-like, he decides to steal an egg from the bird's nest. He picks up a stone and throws it at the nest with all the energy he has. The stone barely takes a flight and falls right before his feet. He keeps throwing the stone but fails to get close to the nest every time. After failing many times, he concludes that he can't do anything in this zombie body. He can't walk fast. He can't speak. He can't eat. And just can't do anything human-like. He ends up fainting again from hunger. When he wakes up, he realizes that he consumed another live animal while he was unconscious. So now he knows that he has to become strong and act more like a human to investigate his identity without bringing attention to himself. The man believes that humans are cruel, and if they find out that he's a zombie, they'll brutally kill him. The zombie man sneaks into an abandoned village hall, where he finds a perfectly working treadmill. The man knows if he wants to blend in with human society, he must walk or even run like a human. He starts practicing walking on the treadmill, but after falling ridiculously a couple of times, he finally starts getting a hold of it. Next, he wants to speak like a human too. So, he starts going to an isolated cave where he exercises his mouth strength by pressing a twig between his jaws and reading syllables. Then, to eat like a human, he uses twigs as a chopstick and practices picking tree nuts with it. After doing these exercises over and over again for days, he masters them all, and now he's ready to return to human society. He steals some clothes and a pair of shoes before returning to the town. But before he returns, he spends the night in a graveyard where he unexpectedly smells meat. Zombies have a great sense of smell when it comes to blood and meat. And right now, the man can smell meat from a distance. The zombie man sees a human laying out food on a plate. The human hears crackling when the zombie accidentally steps on dry tree twigs. 
Thinking it's a wild animal, the human throws the meat towards the zombie and continues to sit by the grave. As the zombie is about to take a bite, he hears a loud thudding sound. He sees another human crushing the man's head with a heavy stone, then drags his body and throws it down from the cliff. The zombie witnesses everything, and he goes down the cliff to see if he is still alive. The man hands over a key to the zombie and utters some words before passing out. The zombie, as confused as ever, gives a proper burial to the human, then searches his bag, finding his ID and business card. His name was Mu Young Mu Young, and he was a private detective. The zombie man follows the address. He ends up at Kim Mu Young's apartment, where he decides to stay for a while. The place is all a mess, with everything scattered around like it had never been cleaned in ages. But luckily, the zombie man finds lots of food and beverages in the fridge. Without giving a second thought, he rushes to stuff his mouth with fish and cans of cold beer, but his zombie stomach doesn't take it that well. He rushes to the toilet and vomits everything out. To survive the hunger, he decides to work and earn money to buy meat. He gets a remote job of folding pizza boxes for a restaurant. While folding pizza boxes, he hears Detective Mu Young's phone rings for messages. It's from some customer wanting the detective to find a missing dog named Hodu. After ignoring it a few times, the zombie man decides to quit the pizza folding job and do some detective work, thinking it would get him lots of money. He takes up the identity of the dead detective and becomes Mu Young, but before he goes out in the light to meet the client, he orders beauty products and uses them to cover his zombie-like appearance. The zombie, Mu Young, sets out to meet the client but is disappointed to see a child named Jun Wu, who is also the nephew of Sun Ji, the girl earlier who gave him her hoodie, but not more disappointed than when Jun Wu pays him a coin as a deposit. Their deal breaks as Mu Young demands more money while Jun Wu starts asking for a refund. Sun Ji passes by and thinks Mu Young is bullying Jun Wu and stealing his money. While Mu Young tries to avoid confronting her, she fights him, making him retreat from the scene. With that, everyone starts chasing him to the point where he nearly outruns them all. But Sun Ji borrows a helmet and throws it at Mu Young, knocking him down on the ground. The head is a weak point for zombies, so a helmet blow on Mu Young's head made him unconscious. Sun Ji rushes to check on Mu Young but gets anxious, seeing his heart not beating, while taking him to the hospital. Mu Young gains consciousness in the ambulance, freaking everyone out. Sun Ji pushes Mu Young to lie down until they reach the hospital, but Mu Young is just looking for an opportunity to escape. At the hospital, Sun Ji keeps on apologizing to Mu Young, but as soon as she leaves the room, Mu Young runs away from the hospital. On the way back to his office, Mu Young tries to bite a man but awkwardly holds himself back. While wandering around and looking for food, he finds Hodu, the missing dog. He is trying to eat Hodu but the innocent puppy's face is making it hard for him to devour it. Suddenly, he hears an announcement of free tripe soup offered by a new restaurant across the street. Tripe is his favorite meal, so he rushes out to avail the free offer. But as soon as he is about to pick the tripe, Kim Bo Are, a close friend of Sun Ji and also the owner of the tripe restaurant, eats it. She announces that that was the last free sample and that if you want to eat more, get ready to pay. As Mu Young turns around with disappointment, a few zombie dancers approach him thinking he is also here to dance at the restaurant's opening day. Mu Young shrugs them off and starts walking towards his office, but then he learns the dancers will get a free tripe meal after the show. Mu Young hesitantly joins the dancing group but shocks everyone with his zombie dance skills. After the show, when Bo Are distributes a tripe meal to every dancer, she notices Mu Young is missing, but then someone starts screaming in the kitchen. Mu Young is eating raw tripe from the bucket. Detective Cha Du Hyun, a homicide detective from the Gangrim police station and also a friend of Sun Ji, rushes to catch Mu Young but gets a heavy beating instead. Mu Young, who is in beast mode, rushes out of the shop and into the woods, wondering how he knew how to fight. He goes back to his office and starts practicing his moves with a rope. After practicing, he uses whatever BB cream was left to cover his scars. As he is about to leave his office, he smells Sun Ji from a distance and tries to avoid her. Sun Ji pushes hard to talk to him about the settlement agreement and leaves her number. After tearing down the agreement, Mu Young goes out and shows his fighting move to Jun Wu, who is a karate student, and asks him if he knows anything about the move. Jun Wu takes him to his karate class, where everyone makes a guess but no one can really tell the name of his move. Mu Young is really desperate to know about this fighting style as it must be linked to his past that he can't remember. While Mu Young is walking down the road, his eyes land on the television airing So Ri's murder case. So Ri was a child kidnapped and murdered on Christmas Day by someone dressed as Santa Claus. 
When Mu Young sees her picture on the TV, he gets lost in his mind and starts hitting the glass window out of frustration. After getting to his senses, he returns to his office, where he gets stormed by an old hag who is the owner of the building and has come here for the rent. Mu Young realizes you need money to survive, even if you're a zombie, so he starts looking for ways to earn money, like charging $5 for Jun Wu and his friends to play with Hodu for one hour. He also tapes up the torn settlement agreement and decides to ask for $100,000 from Sun Ji as settlement money. At night, Mu Young heads out to find Sun Ji to hand her over the agreement paper, but Sun Ji gets kidnapped by a religious cult group that doesn't want Sun Ji to expose their leader. While the van is going fast on the road, Mu Young, out of nowhere, stands on their way to stop them. He rescues Sun Ji, who is completely drunk and not in her senses. While trying to get settlement money, Mu Young tells her how he's suffering physically and mentally after the accident, but Sun Ji leans on his chest and goes to sleep. While taking a shower, Mu Young remembers glimpses of his past. He was shot and murdered exactly what the holes in his stomach suggest. Mu Young is starving like usual, with no money to buy meat or pay bills. He even goes as far as hunting a pigeon and placing his business card in the washroom to get any clients, but his face lights up when he smells Sun Ji coming to her office. Thinking he'll get $100,000 in settlement from Sun Ji. His dreams are shattered when he learns that Sun Ji is struggling even more financially than him, but Sun Ji offers to work for him as a settlement. At this point, Mu Young simply hates Sun Ji and finds her a nuisance. While Mu Young tries to drag her out, Mu Young's old customer comes in with a job request. She is an actress looking for her daughter, Yun Ju, who has not been home for over a month. She offers a lot of money for the job. Sun Ji joins. She starts asking her relevant questions. Her background in journaling makes her best for this role. So Mu Young reluctantly accepts her in the team. Their investigation leads them to a fast center. Mu Young joins their program to look for Yun Ju in their facility, whereas Sun Ji is going to assist him from outside. Mu Young tries to sneak in some meat, but the staff there takes it away. During the day, everything seems normal, but at night, while wandering around the building, he ends up in a secret tunnel that leads him to a cult meeting. The cult leader, Li Kuang Shik, drugs the participants and converts them into his followers to gain their wealth. Upon knowing this, Sun Ji immediately calls Detective Cha. She takes his help to get into the center. She was denied entrance earlier, but this time, she sneaks into the center in a drum. She has to find Yun Ju, who is captured somewhere in the building. She finally finds her tied in a basement. After rescuing Yun Ju, Sun Ji decides to go after the chairman of the cult group, Li Kuang Shik. She gets caught by the manager, but Mu Young comes to her rescue, taking down the manager by throwing his cards like a blade. Sun Ji proceeds to stop Li Kuang Shik from escaping. Mr. Li stabs Sun Ji with his cane, but Mu Young jumps in and shields her. The cane pierces through Mu Young's body, but he doesn't feel anything except anger. A heartless zombie suddenly feels so angry that he's about to choke Mr. Li, but Sun Ji stops him in time. After handing the cult culprits to the police and rescuing Yun Ju, Everyone goes home happily. Sun Ji enjoys eating fried chicken with her family, while Mu Young celebrates this victory with a warm bath and fresh chicken meat. But he doesn't realize that Lee Sunrock, another private detective across the street, is watching him. Sunrock gets scared but not more than Sun Ji, who happens to bring fried chicken for her boss and sees his zombie body. She freaks out and runs away, not believing what she saw earlier. She starts researching zombies and whether they exist in real life. Taekyung gives his two cents about zombies, and he's a firm believer that zombies do exist, and there's one existing in the neighborhood. Everything starts making sense to Sun Ji, like why Mu Yun had no heartbeat and how he was standing straight with a cane pierced through his body. She tries to tell Sian Young, her sister, that her boss is a zombie, but no one believes her. After layering herself with combat equipment, Sun Ji goes back to Mu Yun's office and asks for her money, but she starts feeling a sharp pain in her stomach making her unconscious. While she thinks Mu Young will eat her once she passes out, Mu Young takes her to the hospital. When she wakes up on the hospital bed in one piece, she realizes Mu Young is a zombie, but he's a good zombie who doesn't eat humans. She goes back to the office and starts helping him. Sun Ji feels impressed seeing Mu Young take so much care of his hygiene despite being a zombie. She wants to help him find his past. For what he actually came for in Gangrim, they start by assessing his possessions when he first woke up as a zombie. His clothes, the broken watch, and a unique-looking lighter. Sun Ji takes a picture of the lighter and posts it on social media to get in contact with someone who knows anything about it. 
She receives an unknown message claiming to know something about the lighter, they decide to meet at a location, but while Mu Young and Sun Ji are waiting for the person, they cancel the meeting at the end time. As they are about to leave, they meet Oh Hai and Chiol, the eyewitness of the So Ri murder case. As they are talking to Hai and Chiol, he receives a call from her wife. His mother, who has dementia, is lost somewhere in the Gangrim Mountains, so, being a part of a private detective agency, Sun Ji hands him their business card and offers to help him find her mother. Mu Young doesn't seem interested in finding missing persons without a fee, but he reluctantly agrees to find her mom because of Sun Ji. Mu Young is working hard in the woods looking for any leads. He stumbles across a missing elder information ID card that belongs to Hai and Chiol's mother. Sun Ji is exhausted and barely catching up to Mu Young, but Mu Young being a zombie, has infinite stamina. Finally, they find Hai and Chiol's mother sitting under a tree. But as they try to take her home, a wild boar makes a surprise entrance. It charges Sun Ji, who freezes in fear and falls to the ground. Mu Young throws himself on top of her and saves her like a chivalry hero from medieval times. Sun Ji puts her trust in Mu Young to save them from the wild boar. Mu Young confidently stands up, and the great battle begins. Zombie vs Wild Boar Unaware of the boar's strength, Mu Young stands his ground, but soon after, the boar is throwing Mu Yun like a beach ball. After taking some beating from the boar, Mu Yun comes up with a plan. He stands at the edge of the cliff and invites the boar to attack him. As the boar charges him, he slightly moves, paving the way for the boar to fall from the cliff. But unlucky Mu Yun gets his coat stuck in the boar's horn and falls with the boar. Sun Ji rushes to check on Mu Yun, screaming his name. However, Mu Yun is still alive and wins the battle. As a prize, he gets a whole wild boar to eat. While carrying the boar on their shoulders, Mu Young and Sun Ji take Hai and Chiol's mother to Hai and Chiol. Hai and Chiol couldn't be less thankful as he received her mother unharmed. As they say their goodbyes, the mother starts crying and desperately hugs Mu Young, thinking he is her lost son. She has dementia, and everyone feels sorry for the old lady for being in such a sad state. Mu Young starts feeling sad too thinking he may have a mother somewhere who's also crying and eagerly waiting for him. Sanji notices that and takes him to a popular shaman, Victoria the Lotus Fairy, who will read his hands and tell his past. Mu Young doesn't really believe in such things, but Sanji pushes him to give it a try. As the meeting begins, the shaman jingles annoying bells and displays a weird dance. Then, before she says anything, she signals Sanji to take out money. After taking the money, she tells a specific detail about Mu Young giving him hope that he can finally know his past. But as she demands more money to take him to a ritual, Sun Ji recognizes her from an earlier episode of a crime-exposing show. Sun Ji puts lipstick on her, and that shaman turns out to be what Sun Ji suspected, a con artist. Mu Young feels disappointed. For once, he got his hopes high, thinking she would tell him something about his past. On the other hand, Sun Ji snatches her bells and starts jingling them to show the shaman how annoying she is. The sound of a bell jingling takes Mu Young to his memory, where he sees So Ri holding a doll. Mu Young seems to be hurting in the head as he sees a glimpse of his past. He gets up and walks away as he is suffocating in there. Mu Young tells Sun Ji about what he remembered about his past. A child from the Santa murder case was holding a doll. Sun Ji covered the Santa Claus murder case when she was working as a TV journalist. But Sun Ji doesn't remember finding any doll in the case. So she calls Detective Cha, who was also working on the case, and asks him if he found any doll at the crime scene. But he is also clueless. Mu Young guesses that he may be related to So Ri. So Sun Ji takes him to visit So Ri's father to see if they can trace his past. However, So Ri's father is out of the country and won't be home until next month. It's already been a long day, so Mu Young returns to the office after dropping Sun Ji at her house. Sun Ji also had a tiring day but is happy she spent time with Mu Young. While she is thinking about how Mu Young saved her from the wild boar, Detective Cha finds a photo of So Ri holding a bunny doll. He forwards it to Sun Ji. Mu Young affirms that it's the same doll he saw in his memory. But how is Mu Young linked to So Ri? Mu Young enters his office and stands in disbelief, seeing the whole office upside down. Seems like someone was looking for something. Mu Young checks his belongings, and everything's there except the lighter. It's Oh Hai and Chiol who broke in and stole the lighter. Mu Young figures it out, and without letting Sun Ji know, he meets with Hai and Chiol to ask about his past. Mu Young's life flashes before his eyes as Hai and Chiol talks about his past and how he's responsible for kidnapping and killing So Ri. Mu Young can't bring himself to accept that he murdered a child. 
Maybe becoming a zombie was his punishment for committing such a horrendous crime. Thinking he is worse than a zombie, he tries to drill his head and end his life. But the drill machine stops working right before piercing his head. While trying to fix the wire, Mu Young gets an electric shock and falls to the ground. While Mu Young is going through a depressive mode, Sun Ji visits So Ri's father, where she sees a photo of So Ri hanging on the wall. In that photo, she sees a hand wearing the same watch as Mu Young's. It was So Ri's private bodyguard. From there, she learns that Mu Young is So Ri's bodyguard. Sun Ji is glad knowing that Mu Young was a good guy and someone So Ri wholeheartedly trusted. Sun Ji is excited to share the news with Mu Young that she finally found his past. On the other hand, Mu Young is trying to leave Gangrim City, since Haiyang Chiol told him about his tainted past. After not hearing back from Mu Young, Sun Ji goes to his office but finds him not there. The fridge is filled with chicken, and nothing else seems out of order, but then she finds Haiyang Chiol's photos on the table. She instantly remembers Mu Young telling her to be careful around Haiyang Chiol. Now she knows where to look to find Mu Young. Sun Ji texts Mu Young that she's going to Haiyang Chiol's house. Mu Young tries to warn her, but his phone signals are not working. As he realizes that Sun Ji can get in danger, he runs his way back to Gangrim City. Haiyang Chiol and his wife look anxious when they hear someone knocking on the door. It's Sun Ji, who wants to talk to Haiyang Chiol about the Santa case. She has a USB with important evidence on the case, a CCTV video of the night when So Ri was killed. Since Haiyang Chiol was the sole witness, Sun Ji thought it would be a good idea to watch the CCTV video together with Haiyang Chiol. Only if she knew that Haiyang Chiol was the main culprit. As Sun Ji sees Haiyang Chiol sneakily picking a hammer to attack her, she throws hot tea on his face and runs into a room, locking herself in. Haiyang Chiol's wife and mother are also in the room, looking puzzled, not knowing what's happening. Sun Ji begs his wife to call the police and tells her that your husband is a homicide murderer. As she is trying to hold the door, Haiyang Chiol's wife smacks her head with a heavy stone. His wife is his partner in crime and Sun Ji went right into the crocodile's jaws. While they tie her up in the house, Haiyang Chiol confesses how it was him and his wife all along the culprits behind the murder. Sun Ji fumes in a mixture of anger and sadness, but there is no time for emotions because they are planning ways of getting rid of her. Haiyang Chiol goes out for some important work, leaving his wife with a job to get rid of Sun Ji. Just in time, when Mrs. Haiyang comes to kill her, Sun Ji cuts her hands free with a crab claw and jumps out of the way. Sunji struggles to hold her down as Mrs. Haiyang aggressively attacks her, but Sunji gets her hand on Roach Spray, and she sprays it on Mrs. Haiyang's face, buying enough time to escape. She sprints out of the house as Mrs. Haiyang chases her, but Mu Young is there right on time, helping her hide. Mu Young was lied to by Haiyang Chiol that he murdered So Ri. In fact, he was assigned to find So Ri when she was kidnapped. When Sunji tells her the truth about who he is, he feels relieved to know that he didn't kill a child but not more than Sun Ji, who has come out of the death trap alive, and now drowses in the warm arms of Mu Young. As Haiyang Chiol is about to leave Gangrim with his family, his wife forgets something and goes back into the house to get it. The police arrive and surround the house while Mrs. Haiyang is still in. His wife gets arrested as Haiyang Chiol stares in frustration. He drives away leaving his wife, but he is not going to keep quiet for long. He feels the rage of losing his wife and he blames Mu Young and Sun Ji for everything. Mu Young still believes that he needs to listen to Haiyang Chiol's side of the story, so he calls him and agrees to meet at an isolated place. Mu Young goes to the location and sees Chiol's car parked on the side of the road. Chiol's not in the car but he has left a present for Mu Young. He is inside a warehouse and instructing Mu Young on the call to open the gift. Apparently, in that gift box, there's everything Mu Young needs to know about his past. So to get the present as he pulls the door handle, the car explodes. Haiyang Chiol thinks he got Mu Young good, and his revenge ends here. But being the eternal zombie he is, Mu Young stands up and now he remembers everything, who he was, and what happened to him that night of cold Christmas. He was a private bodyguard of So Ri. On the day when So Ri was kidnapped, he found the lighter that belonged to Haiyang Chiol. He traced Chiol to his home and found So Ri tied to the chair. As he was about to rescue So Ri, Chiol attacked him from behind, knocking him out. He took Mu Young into the woods and shot him in the stomach, leaving his body there to rot. Remembering everything, he rages even more now, as he makes his way to the warehouse, where Haiyang Chiol is hiding with his mom. While Haiyang Chiol is grieving his wife, 
Mu Young enters the warehouse with ice glaring in anger. Haiyang Chiul stares in disbelief as Mu Young slowly walks towards him. The first punch from Mu Young hits hard on his face, throwing him to the side. Mu Young starts throwing punches at his face, making his face bleed. But Haiyang Chiul seems to enjoy the beating and taking the hits with pride. He is laughing, which even more infuriates Mu Young, who wants to know why he killed an innocent child. Haiyang Chiul blames Mu Young for coming looking for So Ri. If he hadn't come, so Ri would live happily with Haiyang Chiul. Mu Yun obviously doesn't buy that psychotic excuse for such a crime, and gets ready to give another hard punch to his face. But Haiyang sneakily takes out his gun and shoots Mu Yun. Mu Yun falls to the ground, but a bullet on the body is not enough to stop a fuming zombie. Haiyang is leaving with his mom thinking Mu Yun is the news now, but as he turns around Mu Yun is on his feet. Fear takes over Haiyang as he sees Mu Yun charging him despite taking a bullet. He fires more bullets hoping to stop the beast, but Mu Yun doesn't budge. Then Haiyang aims for his head, and now Mu Yun feels worried. A shot in the head will take down a zombie. Haiyang fires, but the old lady, who was said to be Haiyang's mother, comes in the way and takes the bullet on her back. Mu Yun doesn't understand why she did that, but as she whispers his real name, Min Ho, his heart stops for a second time. All along, she was his mother. He gets flashbacks of his mother coming to wake him up. Now he remembers everything. All along, he was looking for his mother, who was right there before his eyes. But he couldn't remember. He holds her dearly as he cries his eyes out. Then, he looks at Hyun with a firing rage in his eyes. Mu Young, or now Min Ho, has murder on his mind. While Hyun picks up his gun in a hurry, Mu Young gets up and charges him. Everyone dresses in black and attends the funeral of Mu Young's mother. Mu Young may be free from physical pain, but he seems deeply hurt by the loss of his mother. He sits quietly in the corner while others pay their respect to the departed soul. After the funeral ceremony is completed, Mu Young and Sun Ji go outside to talk for a while. Sun Ji asks him if he ate Oh Haiyang Chiul, but Mu Young stays quiet. Then he tells her to not come to work from tomorrow. After finding out about his past, Mu Young sees no point in living as Detective Kim Mu Young. Leaving everything behind, detective clothes, money, and phone, he says his final goodbye to Kim Mu Young's identity. But obviously, Sun Ji is not very happy with this decision, and she feels betrayed. Not because she lost a job but a kind boss with whom she went through ups and downs. She calls Detective Cha and asks him about Oh Haiyang Chiul's body found in the woods. She asks him whether it was eaten or not. But Cha laughs at her weird question and discloses that he was shot and died after losing too much blood. Sun Ji feels a sigh of relief, knowing Mu Yun will never go as low as to eat a human. But now she doesn't understand why Mu Yun would leave if he hadn't eaten Hai and Chiol. Mu Yun packs his BB cream and some chicken and leaves the office for a new journey. While aimlessly walking the street, he looks at chicken and tripe in the market. It reminds him of the good times when Sun Ji was arranging chicken in the fridge when he and Sun Ji were eating tripe stew together, and when he was sneakily trying to eat meat at Jun Wu's birthday party. Mu Young doesn't show, but deep down, he is missing too, the time spent with Sun Ji. At least he had lots of chicken when he was a detective. After leaving all the money he earned as Kim Mu Young, he can't afford meat, so he starves. But being around humans who smell so delicious, it's hard for a zombie to control its appetite. Mu Young invades an ant colony and eats some ants to feed his hunger. But what difference can it make to his hunger? He's finding it even more challenging than before to control his hunger. His eyes turn red like he's losing control. Mu Young desperately looks for something to eat in garbage cans. He stops and turns as he smells a human passing by. He enters his zombie mode, with his eyes turned red. He tries to chase the human but faints because of extreme starvation. He wakes up in his office with chicken bones scattered everywhere. He tries to remember what happened last night, but his head feels heavy. He's worried if he harmed anyone after fainting. There are scratches on the door, and the doorknob is also broken. Sun Ji comes to see Mu Young. She finds out that he's struggling even more to control his appetite for humans. While Mu Young can't go back to being a human, he can work on his self-control and be less of a zombie. He asks Sun Ji for help, and she is more than ready to do everything she can. To practice self-control, Sun Ji makes Mu Young do some drills, like having chicken in front, but he's not allowed to eat. Then, she decides to chain him up to starve him for three days until he faints and becomes a zombie. She also sets cameras to record his behavior for 72 hours. She leaves him there and camps outside the office. 38 hours into the drill, Mu Young is already trying to break free. It appears that Mu Young gains unimaginable power when he turns into beast mode. 
While sleeping is not part of the plan, Sun Ji falls asleep on the chair. She wakes up and instantly peeks through the curtains to check on Mu Young. Mu Young is on the floor feeding on chicken like a beast. He looks around and sees Sun Ji looking at him. Mu Young is not Mu Young anymore. He's a savage zombie who sees a delicious, sweet human. The worst part is that the door now broke earlier, so the door is not locked either. While Sun Ji reluctantly falls back, Mu Young slowly walks out the door, staring at her with hunger in his eyes. Sun Ji turns back and runs as fast as she can, but Mu Young catches up to her as she falls to the ground. As he is about to bite her neck off, Sun Ji gets her hand on a frying pan and smacks it on Mu Young's head, knocking him out. The next morning, Mu Young wakes up and straight away asks what happened last night. Sun Ji tells him how he's becoming more and more dangerous when he loses consciousness, but she also figured out how to stop him when he's in zombie mode, smack him with a frying pan behind his head. While talking to Mu Young, she realizes that this is the first time she's seen him without wearing BB cream. She finds his zombie face appealing. Sun Ji suggests Mu Young to stay in the office as he is safe here. In other words, humans stay safe from him too. Mu Young agrees, and while he's once again borrowing the real Kim Mu Young's identity, he wants to do something for him to return the favor. The real Kim Mu Young was murdered while he was visiting his father's grave. He had no family, so no one came looking for him. But Mu Young wants to return the favor by finding his killer, No Pung Shik. No Pung Shik just finished his time in prison for illegally throwing medicine waste on the mountain. After coming out of the prison, he calls Kim Mu Young's agency and learns that Kim Mu Young is still alive. The real Kim Mu Young was long dead, and this was the zombie detective who took his place. But No Pung Shik is coming for whoever it is. He tells Sun Rock and his assistant Wang Wei to follow Mu Young. On the other hand, Mu Young and Sun Ji are investigating the real Kim Mu Young. So far, they only have a receipt from the hair salon he last went to before dying. At the salon, they get to know about Dr. No, a veterinarian who runs the animal hospital across the road. He takes in stray animals and does all kinds of experiments on them. Mu Young and Sun Ji go to his vet shop, which is closed. Mu Young can see Dr. No's photo on the wall. He instantly remembers him from the man who killed Kim Mu Young. Now they know who killed the real Kim Mu Young. Sun Rock, who was following Mu Young and Sun Ji, reports to Dr. No that they visited your shop. Dr. No instructs him to kidnap Mu Young and bring him here. Sun Rock and Wang Wei set an electric trap for Mu Young on his office door. They are eagerly waiting for Mu Young to enter the office, but the trap is useless for Mu Young as he doesn't feel any physical pain. Mu Young finally walks in and gets electrocuted. With that, blackout spreads in the whole gang room. After a while, when they don't hear anything, Sun Rock and Wang Wei proceed with their plan to kidnap Mu Young, but when they arrive at his office, he is not fainted as they expected him to be after getting electrocuted. Sun Rock freaks out, seeing Mu Young chilling on his chair, and falls right into the electric trap. He faints on the ground, taking Wang Wei with him. Sun Rock never gives up. He tries again by sending half a dozen men to capture Mu Young. Beating these men seems like a walk in the park for Mu Young. Sun Rock watches the fight from his office, but not for long. As he sees his men getting crushed, he takes the brave step and decides to take on the Mu Young himself. The great battle between Gangrim's private investigators begins. As Mu Young holds Sun Rock down, he can't control but thinks of devouring that juicy fat body of Sun Rock. His appetite for humans is great but nothing that he can't control. However, while fighting with Sun Rock, he feels extra hungry. Mu Young loses control of himself and tries to bite Sun Rock, which freaks him out. Sun Rock throws a sharp wooden piece at Mu Young, piercing his heart, but it doesn't stop him. Sun Rock sees a monster before his eyes. Mu Young holds himself enough not to eat Sun Rock and sprints out of the building. Sun Ji runs after Mu Young, trying to stop him. While she can't keep up with Mu Young's speed, she is surely skillful when it comes to pitching. She throws a frying pan with a trajectory to hit Mu Young on the head. She hardly misses, and today was not that day either. Mu Young knocks down on the ground, and Sun Ji takes her back to the office. Meanwhile, Sun Rock is traumatized after seeing Mu Young in a zombie state. The next day, he and Wang Wei go to Dr. No to return his money. They tell Dr. No that Mu Young is a monster. Despite being stabbed in the heart, he was still standing on his feet. Dr. No knows what they are talking about, but even more so, he is glad that they brought Mu Young's DNA. To confirm his theory, Dr. No injects Mu Young's DNA into a rabbit, and it turns into a zombie bunny. Sun Rock seems to be a loyal informer of Dr. No as he returns again with information related to Mu Young. 
Mo Young came earlier to Sun Rock, asking him about No Pun Shik and the missing persons from five years ago. Dr. No seems very interested in Mu Young now. As Dr. No leaves the room to answer someone at the gate, Sun Rock notices a weird growling noise coming from somewhere around. His detective nature can't hold him quiet when there's something to look into. Despite the discouragement from his assistant, Wang Wei, Sun Rock starts searching around until he finds a secret door behind the fridge. Without thinking much, they enter the room, which seems like a secret lab. They continue being nosy, looking for the source of that growling sound. There are lots of animals in the cage, but then there is one huge cage covered with a cloth. Hesitantly, Sun Rock unveils the cage and faints, seeing a zombie, while Dr. No nefariously stands behind and watches everything. While Mu Young is in his office figuring out the mystery about Dr. No, he hears a knock on his door. He opens the door and sees Dr. No wearing a gas mask. He takes out a green bottle and pours the chemical on the floor. As Mu Young breathes the gas in, he falls asleep instantly. Dr. No kidnaps Mu Young and takes him to his secret lab. After taking out a blood sample, he ties him to the bed, then continues doing his experiments. Mu Young asks Dr. No the reason for his barbaric experiments. Dr. No's wife passed away, and he couldn't imagine a life without her. So, he makes a medicine that would bring his wife back to life. However, instead of becoming a human, his wife becomes a zombie, hanging between life and death. Dr. No was devastated but continued to do more experiments on animals and humans alike until makes his wife normal and alive again. In the meantime, the real Kim Mu Young was secretly investigating the missing persons and almost got to Dr. No. He took photos of Dr. No dumping dangerous medicine waste in the woods. But Dr. No didn't take it well and moved Kim out of his way. Also, when Dr. No dumped his dangerous medicine waste, he didn't realize Kong Min Ho was buried there. That chemical got to him, and he became a zombie. Dr. No now takes care of his zombie wife, not accepting that she's gone and she can't be a human again. On the other hand, Sun Ji is looking for Mu Young. Earlier that day, she installed a couple in his phone that allowed them to track each other's devices. His phone location shows that he's in Dr. No's veterinarian shop. Sun Ji's suspicion arises when she sees the shop is closed, but the electric meter is showing that electricity is being used there, so she knows something is fishy. After finding the right opportunity, Sunji sneaks into No's den to save Mu Young. She finds the secret lab and makes her way down the stairs, but as soon as she looks around, her heart jumps into her mouth. Dr. No's zombie wife is lying there. She rushes to untie Sun Rock and Wang Wei, and then moves to Mu Young. Mu Young is tightly taped on the bed, so it takes some time for Sun Ji. While she is busy cutting Mu Young loose, the zombie behind them wakes up. Just in time, the tape comes off, and Mu Young saves Sun Ji from getting bit by the zombie. Mu Young tries to talk to Dr. No's wife in his zombie language in an attempt to calm her down, but Dr. No makes the surprise entry with a double-barreled shotgun. He empowers his zombie wife to eat them. It attacks Sun Rock and bites his stomach. While Dr. No's distracted by his zombie wife attacking Sun Rock, Mu Young throws hands at him trying to snatch the gun. In the struggle, Mu Young accidentally pulls the trigger and blows off the head of Dr. No's zombie wife. Dr. No hysterically cries while holding his wife dearly in his arms. Later, the police arrive and arrest Dr. No, while others receive the medic's attention. With that, it seems like the case finally ends. But no! The police car that was taking Dr. No gets into an accident, and he has escaped. It turns out that Dr. No took the medicine and became a zombie himself. This worries Mu Young and others, as they gather to make the picture-perfect plan to bring down the No zombie. They know that No will come to take his wife's body from the mortuary. So before he gets there, they steal the body to lure him out. Everything was going according to plan, until Dr. No gave a tough time to Mu Young and took Sun Ji with him. He then calls Mu Young alone to a location if he wants to see Sun Ji not eaten up. Mu Young faces Dr. No once again in a fierce battle. He gets kicked and thrown here and there. Dr. No is slower but a way stronger zombie than Mu Young. Without a plan, he can't beat him. As Mu Young lies on the ground, Dr. No makes his way toward the car, dragging Sun Ji along. Detective Cha, who came with Mu Young, appears with a gun behind Dr. No. But No doesn't care if the detective will shoot him or not, as long as he doesn't aim for the head. No smacks Detective Cha on the car, and his gun falls. Sun Ji kicks it towards Mu Young, and Mu Young dives and rolls on the ground to pick it up. He aims the gun at No, but he doesn't feel threatened, knowing Mu Young is too soft to pull the trigger. He is right. He doesn't pull the trigger, instead goes with the plan he made with Sun Rock and Wang Wei. 
Sun Rock and Wang Wei crash the party in a van with gas masks, and the same green chemicals that make anyone instantly fall asleep. They pass the masks, and once they are all ready, Sun Rock and Wang Wei release the chemical gas, making no faint. Sun Rock gets close to check whether Dr. No has been successfully knocked out. Suddenly, No wakes up and grabs Sun Rock by the neck. He's about to bite a chunk out of his neck, but Mu Young aims the gun at his face and warns him. No thinks he's bluffing again, so he doesn't stop. Without uttering a second word, Mu Young shoots him in the head. Mu Young feels numb, maybe because deep down he had hopes that Dr. No could make him human again, and with him dying, his hopes died too. Sun Ji tries to console him but nothing seems to lift his mood. He wanted to become a human and live a normal life in Gangrim with Sun Ji and the other friends he made. But now that it's not possible, Mu Young wants to leave Gangrim and live far from human society. They all respect his choice and give him a tight hug. Sun Ji takes over Kim Mu Young's agency and continues the legacy of the great detective. A year later, she receives an invitation to a Halloween party from an unknown address. She attends the party, hoping deep in her heart that she will meet Mu Young there. Her face lights up as she sees Mu Young in a nicely fit white suit sitting and smelling his drink. While they are chatting, someone screams from behind. Turns out someone got murdered. The story ends with Sun Ji and Mu Young having another murder case at hand to solve.